Hi everyone, welcome to Queen's Move, your new source and community for arm wrestling news and analysis. My last few videos have been running a little long, but I'll keep this one short and sweet, I promise. I don't know about you guys, but when the Levon vs. Ermes match was announced, I procrastinated my excitement. This isn't because I don't appreciate what both of these titans of the sport of arm wrestling bring to the table. When it's all said and done, I feel safe in saying that most people's list of the greatest arm wrestlers who have ever walked the planet will have Levon Sagnashvili somewhere at or near the top. To me, even with paying proper respects to the greats who have come before the Georgian giant, guys like Cleve Dean, Dave Patton, Johnny Walker, Levon, currently, as he exists right now with his current body of work, is appropriately deserving of potentially cracking the top five. Think about it. Before Levon, was there an arm wrestler who carried even close to the same air of invincibility? To me, there is only one guy that, for a short time, had the same aura of dominance. Alexei Vavoda. And yet, when you actually think about what he did, it's insanely impressive. He literally defeated his idol, John Brzezink, on what was arguably the biggest stage for arm wrestling at the time in the very midst of John Brzezink just entering his prime after already having dominated the sport for almost 20 years at the time. Before I get too carried away on this thought, I'll save my actual top five arm wrestlers for another video. But suffice to say, Levon is sufficiently, quietly, and slowly doing what so many of his early critics said he couldn't. He's not only paid his dues as an extremely skilled arm wrestler with very good table IQ, He's also on the verge of longevity across multiple years that has only been accomplished by a handful of legends that came before him. So, the elephant in the room, my first hot take, and this is just me being honest, I went over this again and again in my head, and I tried to come up with reasons why this match wasn't striking a chord with me the way some of the most recent headliners have at both King of the Table and East vs. West. I was trying to crack the code on why I simply wasn't as excited about Levon versus Ermes at first. And then the reasons for my lack of enthusiasm began to slowly come into focus. But what about Ermes? Ermes Gasparini has arguably had one of the most rapid rises to stardom in the history of the sport, and he has gotten better and bigger every single time I've seen him in the public eye the last couple of years. He is a very likable personality in the sport and has an infectious sense of humor, although I admit so much of my laughter comes from thoughts that arise when I hear his accent. I am personally a fan of Ermes Gasparini, but if we are doing our due diligence for the sake of the sport of arm wrestling and its future well-being, I think we also have to ask ourselves a tough question, and it's the same question we will have to ask anyone who faces off against the Georgian Hulk. Is this person really the consensus number two arm wrestler on the planet? Now, there is no doubt that Levon has more than adequately defended his throne up to this point. But why can't I shake the feeling that this match happened about a year before it should have? And that really is the crux behind my initial lack of enthusiasm. But worry not, my feelings on this match have changed, and I'm happy to report that I'm so excited about this match that I will likely and admittedly not be getting much sleep tonight. So, now that I've laid all of my cards out on the table on what I can admit is a slightly controversial take, I'd like to put all that aside and just live in the excitement of the moment, now less than 12 hours away from King of the Table 6. Here are my short and sweet predictions for King of the Table. Pavlo Derbedenev isn't new to the sport, but his presence in the sport still feels refreshing, doesn't it? He handles himself with class is humble, and is extremely calm and collected with his words. But make no mistake, his best and most impressive body of work took place in 2022, with victories over Eric Gerlach, Paul Talbot, and Michael Todd left-handed. But in my opinion, his crowning achievement of the entire year had to be the decisive 3-0 victory over another extremely personable rising star in the sport, Paul Lynn. Sabine Badalescu needs little introduction, but in spite of his past pedigree, is his current form enough to overcome all that is going right in the sport right now for Pablo? Sabine said it himself right before the press conference for King of the Table. He's a lover. And in addition to being an entrepreneur, Sabine is hilarious to watch and listen to, both on the table and in the background. 
but this match will, in my opinion, be the most heavily contested match of the event, and admittingly is a tricky one to predict because Sabine hasn't been as active as of late. Pablo just seems so focused right now, and he looked great when he arrived in Dubai. Not sure if anyone agrees, but his pulling style at times reminds me a lot of Tim Bresnan. Sabine's pedigree might overwhelm Pablo for a round or two, but in the end, I see this one going to Pablo, either 4-2 or 4-3. On to John and Dennis. It's rather strange seeing John Brzezink not only playing the role of underdog, but also being actively rooted against to such a degree. This is, I think, a testament to the character of Dennis Saplinkov and how he has proven himself to be every bit of the peaceful warrior that his reputation precedes. Truth be told, no one is giving John even the slightest chance of pulling this off, but it does sound somewhat familiar. Simply put, it's extremely nice to welcome Dennis back to the sport of arm wrestling. We have missed you. Usually I root for John almost 100% of the time. This time, for all the reasons I mentioned, I have no problem saying that I think and hope that Dennis wins 6-0, which is my official prediction. And we've saved the best for last. If Levon didn't have such ample time to prepare for this match, and if he were pulling random arm wrestlers one after another, Hermes might be able to compromise Levon's wrist out of sheer surprise by the effectiveness of his bread-and-butter top roll, which is now debatably the most effective top roll in the history of the sport. But since he's had so much time to prepare, there's not much Hermes can do that Levon hasn't adequately prepared for. As much as I'd like to see Hermes get in a pin or two, I just don't see him being able to stop Levon at any point. I'm giving this one to Levon 6-0. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll need all of your support moving forward. Please like the video, subscribe, and share this with people who think like you. See you next time.